Welcome to the Open Arms 2024 Pre-Challenge Huddle. We are so excited to have you joining us. My name is Amber Eby, and I'm a Senior Grant Specialist at Maddie's Fund. Joining me today is our Grants Manager, Kelly Clarity. Hey, Kelly. And I've got Irene Chansawong, our Senior Grant Specialist, giving us some tech support too. So we are very excited to talk to you today about the 2024 Open Arms Challenge. And what that means specifically is we're going to do an overview of how challenges work versus traditional grants, the goal of our 2024 Open Arms Challenge, some things for you to consider while submitting your participation reports, some key dates an overview of our grants portal, and how to connect with us if you have further questions. So whether this is your first time joining us for the challenge or you've been with us since we started these challenge grants, we are happy to have you and we hope you get something out of this call. So we're going to talk first about really the nature of challenges and how challenges work. And I think what's important first is to talk about um, traditional grants, which I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with. So traditional grants, an organization submits a grant request, the funder approves the grant, the organization does um, spends the funds doing their great work, and at the end, the organization submits a report. So the challenge grants are a little bit different in that we're having all of the organizations, all of the funders come together to achieve a, saved, a shared goal. So this particular challenge is supported by 25 national partners. Um, so the first thing we're going to have you do is apply to join the challenge. We're going to give you lots of great resources, um, some practices to get to that goal, to accomplish that goal. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is apply to join the to join the challenge. You're going to look at the practices and say, what are we going to do during the challenge month? So during the challenge month, you get the chance to pilot your new programs and services, work on your chosen practice, and see what the results are. At the end of the challenge month, you submit a participation report describing your work. So these participation reports are what we use to award the funding. And in this challenge, there are actual six funders contributing $510,000, it's a big number, to the grant funding. So that's Adopt-A-Pet, California for All Animals, Life of Riley, Maddie's Fund, Michelson Found Animals, and Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation. So shout out to all the funding partners working on this challenge. And another shout out to the national partners who are also providing prizes in the form of conference scholarships, education tools, and other fun and kind resources. So remember, um, it's the participation reports that determine the award and the funding. So this grant does not do um, operating costs. There's no upfront costs. This is, you're doing the work putting in your participation report, and then that's how we're going to determine the funding as a group of funders. Um, so really, we're going to need two things from you. And when we talk about the key dates, we'll talk about this in more detail. So just keep in mind that not everyone who submits a participation report, not everyone who applies will receive funding or a grant, but you will all get the reward of piloting a new program and service and hopefully bringing your organization forward that way. At the end of the challenge month, once we've awarded the grants, the winners of those grants will participate in a Zoom huddle, and that counts as their final report. So I mentioned earlier that um, our challenges are about organizations coming together to reach a shared goal. So the goal for this challenge, the 2024 Open Arms Challenge, is to create a new program or expand an existing one focused on keeping pets and people together. It's all about opening our hearts and minds to be more accessible and inclusive, helping keep pets with their people and in their communities through return to home, foster programs, TNR, adoption programs, and so, so much more. We have heard from some past challenge participants that they were going to do this work anyways, and being in the challenge helped give them some inspiration, some free resources and networking, focus, plus there was the incentive of the grant. So what are we looking for? Um, what can you do to help, you know, your participation reports stand out? We're really looking for organizations to try something new. 
start a new program or service, or change the practices of an existing program and service to be more open. So business as usual isn't going to cut it. What are you changing, creating, or expanding? We want organizations to be very intentional and thoughtful about their community and their role in it. So I have heard um, from previous challenges about openness and inclusivity that, um, well, our community is all the same. Our community is very homogenous. But really think down who is in your community um, and who are those communities within their communities. We want inclusiveness of everyone regardless of race, socioeconomic status, housing status, religion, ethnicity, citizenship, sexual identity and orientation, age and ability level. Um, so that can just be greeting all your visitors, returning all your voicemails, returning all your emails. And we know that's hard, especially when there's animals in front of you, other people in front of you. But how are you going to create that welcoming and open environment to everyone? We're really looking for organizations to be humble and work with their community, including your community members to determine problems and their solutions, because really, we are all a part of our communities. Um, we also love it when organizations are creative and use their existing resources. So maybe you have a relationship with the fire department because they do a pet food drive for you. Well, could you partner with that uh, fire station to have scanners and um, they could be a return to home resource? Maybe your organization has a vaccine clinic and you know those people coming to the vaccine clinics love their animals because they're getting their animals vaccinated. You know they're vaccinated because you did it. Can you tap those people to be foster parents? How can you welcome your community into being folks receiving services to folks who are helping your organization? So we do have examples of great work like this that I mentioned and examples of where to find past winners. So we've got our Chew on This blog and our website. We've got the discussion thread on Maddie's pet forum that has our past winners. And then we also have a really good recording from last March from a community conversation call where the past winners actually talk about how they did the work to win the open arms challenge. So lots of places where you can go and get inspired and see what you can do for your community. Okay, so we talked a little bit about how the challenges worked and what the goal is for this particular challenge. So now we can talk about what it looks like in real life. So right now, just by joining us on the prep uh, on this prep huddle, you've already done step one, which is the prep period. So from now until April 2024, decide what you're going to do. Check out the practices and resources that we have. We have some great resources around translation around marketing. Um, we have a whole Maddie's University catalog put together um, around the Open Arms Challenge with courses on being more open and welcoming and what that looks like in real life. The pictures that I'm using from this for this presentation are from Heart Speaks Image Library, um, which is really working to find inclusive pictures of all types of people and their pets and all types of services and programs. So again, there's lots of really cool free resources that you can use to decide what your pilot programs and services are going to look like. Um, we also have the Maddie's Pet Forum Open Arms Challenge Group. So please join us there, connect with your fellow organizations and see what work they're doing. So once you've kind of gotten this thought out and decide what you're going to do, uh, apply to join the challenge. The applications open on February 26. Um, so they open actually at like 12.01, midnight 01 a.m. So if you are an early bird, if you're an East Coaster, that's 3 a.m. your time. But hey, that's hours for vet techs and people working in animal control. We know you all work around the clock. So please go ahead and start applying anytime on February 26. And then we are letting you apply until March 6 at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Kelly's going to talk a little bit about how you apply through our grants portal, um, but we'll kind of go over everything more. Uh, we'll go over the timeline first. So once you've applied to join the challenge, um, then you get the challenge month, which is all of April 2024, to pilot your new programs and services. And during that time, we'll have support in the forum. We'll have our community conversations that you can join. Lots of ways for you to get inspired and see what other folks are doing. 
The challenge month ends on April 30th. And then what we ask organizations to do is reflect on the work they did and submit a participation report. Hey, good news too, we already have examples of the application, the participation report on our website. So you can go there and you can say, okay, I can get the information needed in the application when, you know, whenever you have those free moments in between now and the application period, you can start working on that. And you can see what we're looking for in the participation report. So after the challenge month, um, you have until May 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific time to submit that participation report. Now, remember, if you do not submit a participation report, we cannot know what you did during the challenge month and you will not be eligible for a prize. So in order to get a grant or one of the in-kind prizes, we will need two forms from you. The first is the application to join the challenge. And the second is the participation report telling us the great work you did during the challenge month. So again, with those participation reports, the six funders will get together and review them. And not everyone who submits a participation report will be awarded a grant, but everyone does get the reward of doing the work to meet the shared goal. Grants will be awarded the summer of 2024, and then the winners of those grants will participate in the Zoom huddle in September 2024. So that's how the flow of the challenges work. That's the nature of the challenges um, and what we're looking for uh, with folks for the challenge grants. I'm going to turn it over to Kelly and stop sharing my screen. And Kelly is going to tell us a little bit about the grants portal, how to apply, and some more specifics there. All right. So for some of you, this may be a refresher. And for some of you, this may be new. But this is the login page of our grant portal. So if you already have an account, if you have applied through our portal in the past, you'll fill in your username and your password. Depending on your computer settings, it may auto-populate like mine did. Um, if not, you'll type it in. If you don't remember your password, click can't access your account, and that'll walk you through resetting your password. If you are a new user and have never created an account in our portal, click on new user and that'll walk you through all the steps. And here's our grantee portal. So we've got the, the grantee um, dashboard tab at the top, the explore grant opportunities tab, and the profile tab. And I'm going to start with the profile tab and work back. So on the profile tab, you have questions and information about your organization. And this information, some of it will pre-populate or auto-populate from your registration or from a previous application that you've submitted. So some of it may already be filled out for you. There's some questions that may not be filled out. So when you create your account, you wanna go into this profile and you can click on edit over here and go through all the questions and fill them out because you're gonna see this on, a, on the application. So if you can do this ahead of time, you'll be one step ahead. Then you can also click on the contact tab and that is your information. Again, it auto populates from your registration or a previous application, but always a good idea to go in and check and make sure that it's that it's up to date and that nothing has changed. Okay, so then we'll move on to explore grant opportunities. So you see it says all grant cycles are currently closed. But I promise you, when you come back here on February 26th through March 6th, those are the dates that the application is open. So February 26th, remember Amber said it opens right at midnight 01 a.m. So when you come here, it will say Open Arms Challenge 2024. So just click on that. It'll walk you right into the application. And then back on the tab, we're going to the grantee dashboard. We've got some um, information, a little bit of instruction here on the dashboard. And when you scroll down, you have any previous applications or current applications that you're working on, 
and any grantee reports associated with those applications. So I'm going to go back to applications and show you a preview, kind of like a peak preview of our open arms application. All right, so here's the application. You know you're in the right place when at the top it says Open Arms Challenge 2024. And we have five tabs at the top, registration questions, organization information, submitted by, we ask for information, and the submission agreement. So you wanna start with tab number one, work your way through, and you'll see some instructions, some information, and some, you know, who's eligible to apply, some key dates, these probably look familiar to you. And then about halfway down is where the questions start. So we've got about six questions on this page. And then at the bottom, the bottom of every single tab, you have the option to save, save and next, or clear changes. I wanted, this is very important, I want to say this. Our application does not auto save your answers and the application times out after two hours of inactivity. So be sure to save them so that you don't lose any of your work. Save everything because we don't want to, um, we don't want to have you lose any of this work. It's very, very important. So when you get to the bottom of this tab, everything is filled out. I'm going to click on Save and Next to show you what it looks like to go to the next tab. So now here we are on the Organization Information tab. And doesn't this look familiar? It looks like the Profile tab that I showed you at the beginning. So if you filled out the Profile tab, it's all going to populate here. And you won't have to do a thing. Just review, make sure everything is correct and scroll all the way down and hit save and next. And y'all, you're just gonna do, you're just gonna do that. Fill everything out and hit save and next, save and next, save and next until you get to the end. So let's show you the submission agreement tab is the final tab on our application. So there's a little bit of um, information here about when you submit your application, um, who can be considered for an award, um, a follow-up uh, grantee report if you're um, awarded a grant. And you'll want to check yes on this question that you have read and understood. So yes, this box here is green with a check mark. If you check no, it turns red with a big old X in the middle. So be sure it's yes, green, and a check mark. Then you'll hit save. And then you'll scroll back up here to this review and submit. And this brings you to the, your submission page. This You can review all of your answers here and then click on submit. And that'll send your application in. If you don't click on submit, your application will remain an in-progress status and will not be reviewed by Maddie's fund. So click submit. All right. I want to go back to... Um, the grantee dashboard real quick and show you um, where to find your participation report. So we're going to scroll back down to the application. You'll have your open arms application here um, once you've started it and submitted it. And then click on this little down arrow. And you'll have the open arms challenge right here. So just click on the down arrow and click on edit and that'll take you right in. I'm going to let this come up. You see it looks very much like our application. The same thing, you're going to click on um, Save and Next, and then Review and Submit and Submit it. All right, the last thing I want to share is on our website, on our Open Arms Challenge page. When you scroll down in this Related Links box, this teal box, we have Sample Application a sample participation report, and if you win a grant, if you are a grant winner from this challenge, our Zoom huddle final report question. 
So these are links to PDFs. You can download them. You can prep your answers. And y'all, we would very highly, highly suggest that you do that. We really do not want you waiting until the last minute to do all of this, right? The application cycle is open February 26th through March 6th. And we suggest checking out the samples, creating a portal, grant portal account, logging in if you already have one, taking a look around, familiarizing yourself, fill out all the um, your profile questions, and get a head start. And then when the application cycle opens on the 26th, you'll be ready to go. All right, back to you, Amber. Kelly, thank you so much. You're so clairvoyant. Like folks were asking in the chat, like, can I get the application now? Can I get the participation report now? And you just let us right into it. And this is the perfect segue to lead into our last part. So last bit of information. Um, I saw some great questions in the chat um, about where can we get this information. So let's talk about how we connect. Um, we've got the QR codes up here, um, so please join us on Maddie's Pet Forum. Um, for there is a discussion thread specifically for this challenge with a lot of great resources. We'd love to see you on our Monday community conversations call to get inspired and to network with your fellow shelters. Um, P.S. If you haven't joined us on the community conversations calls, you are entered in a grant drawing just for watching those calls live or watching them on demand. So you're going to learn something. And then again, there's always the possibility that you could get a little bit of money. And then finally, um, we'd love to have you visit our Open Arms Challenge 2024 website. Um, that is where you're going to find the sample applications, all the resources and practices, and the sample participation report and final report, as Kelly mentioned. There's also um, some great resources there, um, videos about how to use the grants portal and things like that. And if you have any specific questions, um, Irene and I love to talk to you. You can call us or email us um, and we will help you out. So there is um, a little bit more time left. We've got about five minutes for questions. I did quick want to highlight two questions I saw in the chat that didn't get answered yet. And one was, do you have to be a grants manager or have like a grants title at your organization in order to apply. Um, you absolutely do not. Anyone in your organization can apply and we're here to help no matter what your level of participating in grant applications could, um, is. So we're happy to help anyone from your organization apply for this grant. Could I ask something real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Martha? At, at, yes. At, Hi, Martha. At one, right, hello. At one point, uh, there's something came up and uh, We'd be filling something out. And if we didn't say that we were in California, we didn't qualify. Well, we're in Washington State. Uh, so was that something that applied just at uh, a certain point or what? Um, so for this specific challenge, it is open to national organizations um, that work with dogs and cats. So Washington is A-OK, -okay, um, and you should be able to apply to join the grants portal without any problems around your state. Um, so if you do have problems applying and you get stuck on that, let us know. Um, it shouldn't be a problem because, again, this is open nationally. You might have seen that one of the funders for this challenge is California for all animals. Right. And so that means that that funder can only give grants to specific organizations within California. Um, but there is, a, again, like a pool of funding. So organizations from Washington and other states can still apply and are still eligible to win grants. Um, it just wouldn't be paid by California for all animals. Got it. So, you, yeah, so Martha, you should definitely be able to apply and um, submit the report and everything. Great. Thank you. My pleasure. And Jessica, it looks like Jessica Low Minor, you have your hand raised. Hey, yes. Thank you guys so much for organizing this call. Um, I'm actually calling with the St. Croix Animal Welfare Center, which is in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And so we wanted to find out about the eligibility for U.S. territories. So that is a great question, Jessica. And um, we kind of answered it with Martha's question. So it is just the 50 states and D.C. Um, so unfortunately, we cannot give funding to U.S. territories. Um, 
if you would like to email us at grants at Maddie's Fund, I have a list of organizations that do fund internationally. Um, if you have a partner organization within the 50 states or DC um, and you want to work with them to apply, you can do that. Um, but it's funding for the territory specifically, unfortunately, we are not able to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely email you for that international list. Please thank do. You. I, I, we would be happy to share that with you. Um, uh, and Doreen, it looks like you have your hand raised. Doreen Fang, hi. Hi. I just, this isn't really a question. It's really just to say thank you. Thank you to all of you guys for doing this. You know, I think everyone here, I'm sure this is really important for everybody. So we really, I appreciate it on behalf of Positive Difference here in Las Vegas. So thank you. I'm still learning all this. So if I email you guys with uh, other questions, I hope that's okay. That is totally fine. And thanks for being here, Doreen. And like, one thing to keep in mind, too, is, and that's why we we were doing this. And like, it's different, right? Like how I said at the beginning, there's traditional grants that if you have been in grant writing or fundraising for any amount of time, you might be really used to, you know, I submit the proposal, we get the funding, we move on. And this is different. Um, so it's great for folks to really know what's going on. So it, we're all learning together and we're happy to help. I love that. But you're also uh, getting people to be creative and thinking outside the box and also going away from what we normally do, you know, trying to find other ways. So I think that's really fantastic. So thank you. Totally. I have pleasure. And I always am like, like, cause you know, we've been doing it for a while and you think you hear everything and you think there's like all these good ideas. It's just a matter of spreading them out. And then someone, multiple someones, multiple organizations will come up with these like ideas where you're just like, this is amazing. So it's really cool to see what everyone does. Yes. Thank you so much again. My pleasure. So we've got about one more minute. Um, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Herbert just asked a great question at the end of the call that I do want to highlight. And I think it's a good one to end on. Um, how much are the grants? So in the past, the grants, and Kelly, if I say this wrong, interrupt me, the grants have varied between 1000 and the most has been 20000 correct? Okay, That's awesome. Correct. Um, so it really depends on what we get, right? Like we, um, we usually try to award grants based on the practices, based on overall effort, and that determines the amount of funding. Um, but in general, the grants have be been between a, th a thousand and 20,000. All right. Well, we are at 30 minutes and I don't want to keep anyone any longer because I know you all are doing a ton of great work and that you are very busy people with lots of important things to do. Please, please join us on Maddie's Pet Forum. Um, I'll be checking in a little bit to answer any questions that didn't get asked during this call, anything you thought of later or anything we might have missed. So thank you everyone for all you do to keep pets and people together. Please stay safe and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us, everyone.